Analyzing Transactions Part 2. If you will go ahead and open up your textbook and turn to page 62, kind of mark the pages between 62 through 68, that shows the journal entries that we will, dis we will briefly talk about in this lecture, as well as on page 69 through 71, that also shows the information that's presented in this lecture. So at this time, please go ahead and get your book out and turn to page 62. Right here is an indication of the information that is listed on page 69 through 70 in the textbook. This shows the ledger accounts for the accounts that were used for Net Solutions. Those are the journal entries presented on pages 62 through 68. Notice that each journal entry has been posted to the ledgers already and there's a final balance for each account. So the cash account has $2,065 in it as of December 31st. Land has $20,000. Office equipment $1,800. With all the debits and credits with accounts payable, there's $900 in the accounts payable account. Notice that it has a credit balance. The asset accounts have a debit balance. The accounts receivable has a debit balance of $2,220. Supplies has $2,000. Prepaid has $2,400. Unearned rent, this is also a liability, has a credit balance of $360. The capital account has a credit balance of $25,000. Drawing account has a debit balance of $4,000. The revenue, which is fees earned, has a credit balance of 16340 And notice that the expense accounts all have debit balances. Now, it's important that you make sure that you're not just repeating the debit and credit here into these columns as well. The first debit and credit columns are for what happens in the journal entry. The second debit and credit column is what happens in the running balance. So asset, which is cash, has a debit balance. We run the balance down the debit column. Accounts payable is a liability. It has a normal credit balance, so we run the balance down the credit column. Now, once we have finished journalizing and posting to the ledgers, we then want to do, we want to create what is known as the unadjusted trial balance. The title, the title of the name of the company, unadjusted trial balance and the date of which it is prepared, this is mandatory. You're not going to skip the title. This will make you lose points when you're doing your assignments. You will then want to list all accounts from the chart of accounts in order and list their balances, whether it's a debit or a credit balance. We will start with all assets, cash, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, land, office equipment, and list their balances directly from the ledger. We will then list the liabilities, accounts payable, unearned rent, list their credit balances from the ledger. We will then list the capital and drawing, capital, drawing. The revenue account, which is fees earned, has a $16,340 credit balance. And then we will list the expense accounts, starting with the expense that is the highest, miscellaneous will always be last. Start with your highest expense, list them in order of highest to lowest with miscellaneous always listed last. Step three and four is to prove that the debits and the credits balance. So you will total the debit column to equal 42,600 and credit and total the credit column 42,600. If the debits and the credits equal you can feel about 99% sure that you have completed the journalizing and posting to the ledgers correctly. This proves that your debits equal your credits. All accountants will do a trial balance after transactions after a certain amount of time because we need to make sure that the journal entries and posting to the ledger is something that we're doing correctly. This is known as the unadjusted trial balance. Now, let's take a look at correcting entries real quick. This is an example from the book. The following errors took place in journalizing posting transactions. A withdrawal of $6,000 by Cherry Ramy, owner, owner of the business, was recorded as a debit to office salaries expense and a credit to cash. 
we need to correct this because while credit to cash is correct, office salaries expense is not. This should have been a debit to the drawing account and a credit to the cash account. So to correct this, what we're going to do is we need to switch around the debits. We're not going to mess with the cash account because the cash account was correct in the original journal entry. What we need to do is take it from office seller's expense and move it to the drawing account. So what we'll do to correct this is we will debit drawing for $6,000 and we will credit office salary's expense for $6,000 to offset the debit that was done in the original journal entry that was incorrect. Second example of a correcting entry is utility expense of $4,500 paid for the current month was recorded as a debit to miscellaneous expense and a credit to accounts payable. Journal, we need to correct this. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this around. We're actually going to take this out and move it around to where it needs to go. And so what we're going to do is we are going to reverse the original journal entry and we're going to credit accounts payable for $4,500 and debit miscellaneous expense for $4,500 to reverse the journal entry that was done incorrectly. We will then do a second journal entry to list out the actual payment of this expense. Debit to utilities expense for $4,500 and a credit to cash for $4,500. This is how we do correcting entries. You must first decide what was actually incorrect and the best way to fix it. 